This book that we're going to read together today is called These Bees Count by Alison Formento. And we're going to learn about why bees matter. And a lot of people feel a lot of different ways about bees. You might think that bees are super cute. They're really small and fuzzy. You might eh, just not really think about bees too much. You might be a beekeeper. You might be someone who takes care of bees and who farms their honey. You might be someone who doesn't really like it when bees get too close to you. You might feel a little bit scared about them. Bees can get defensive if they feel scared or upset and they are capable of stinging, which can be very dangerous for some people or just hurt a lot. But there are things that we can do to make sure that bees feel safe around us. And no matter how you feel about bees, you can bring that with you today. And my hope is that when we learn a little bit more about the things that might scare us, we can be a little less afraid of them. And no matter how we feel about them, we can also feel a lot of gratitude for the work that they do and the delicious foods that they make possible. So we're gonna read together today a little bit about why bees are so cool in these bees count. Here we go. The inside is all honeycomb. Inside of each of these little bubbles is a little bit of golden sweet honey. Here we go. Mr. Tate's class loves taking field trips. Today, their bus went to a farm. Do you like taking field trips? I know I always loved taking field trips. Sometimes adventures that I take just by myself or with my family and friends, I call those field trips too because I still miss going on them in school. They're at a farm. This farm is called Busy Bee Farm. Do you see the farmer? There she is. Farmer Ellen led the class through a big field. There weren't any cows or horses or sheep. There were only bees and tall flowers. Amy picked a flower and twirled it. Eli looked around. Is this a flower farm? Farmer Ellen smiled. No, but we grow lots of wildflowers. There's Farmer Ellen and all of the classmates and the teacher and all those wildflowers they're looking at. I wonder what it is that they grow. Lots of flowers, but there's no farm animals. I don't see any vegetables. Hmm. They walked through a grove of blossoming apple trees. Is this a tree farm? Natalie asked. Trees grow here too, Farmer Ellen said, but at the busy bee farm, we farm bees and honey. Honey tastes good, said Jake. Eli held on to Mr. Tate. Bees sting. Only when they're afraid or angry, said Farmer Ellen, and beekeepers always dress for safety before visiting the hives. So some are feeling really excited about honey. Some, like Eli, are feeling a little worried about bees stinging. And Farmer Ellen is sharing that even if you are taking care of bees or you farm bees like she does, there are precautions that can be taken to be really safe around bees. Farmer Ellen took everyone to a small shed. Mr. Tate helped give out beekeeper gear. The children pulled on white jumpsuits over their clothes. Shin smoothed the net over her face. Here comes the bride. She's pretending. <laughs> we look like astronauts, said Jake. I feel safe in here, said Eli. I think that's Eli right there getting his beekeeper hat pulled on top. Do we see how these jumpsuits cover their whole bodies from their necks to their wrists to their ankles? Really covering up a lot of places where a bee might land and potentially sting if it's feeling upset or scared. And these long nets over their faces would keep a bee away from the skin of the face. So it looks to me like they're all really safe and really ready for getting into beekeeping. Farmer Ellen showed the class a field full of tall boxes. Welcome to the bee yard. These are bee houses or apiaries. Honey bees live here in hives. Most fly out each day to work. Bees work, 
Jake asked. Yes, they collect pollen, which is tiny powder-like grains in flowers for their food. This powder, this pollen, is carried on their legs to crops and flowers, plants and trees, and helps them to grow. Sharing pollen this way is called pollination. Can you say that with me? Pollination. Sharing's good, said Shin. So Farmer Ellen is teaching them a lot about the work that bees do. They fly out of their hives, which is their home, where they're safe with the rest of their family. And they fly out from flower to flower to flower, collecting that dusty pollen that is on each flower. When they bring pollen from one flower to the next flower, they are helping those flowers to grow, helping plants and trees to grow too. An amazing thing happens when pollen from one flower reaches another. When pollination happens, a flower can begin to grow into a, do you know the answer? A fruit. Every fruit that we eat was once a flower. My tomatoes were once flowers on a tomato plant that were visited by a bee or a pollinator and that flower turned into a tomato. Each strawberry you eat was once a strawberry flower that turned into a strawberry. So those bees bring pollen from one flower to the next and help them to grow. Wow. Farmer Ellen pushed a can with a long spout into a hole in the back of the bee house. This smoker will help us see the bees. She squeezed the handle and wisps of smoke came out, puffed out, it says. Hundreds of bees followed the smoke in the smoke trail and flew into the air. Farmer Ellen said, now watch them work and hear what they say. Bees don't talk, Amy said. They do, Farmer Ellen said. Listen to their buzz. So Farmer Ellen used this smoke to calm the bees and have them follow the trail of smoke out into the world where they'll begin their work. They'll go from flower to flower. I'm sure that must also help to get the bees out of the apiary so Farmer Ellen can do work inside of their hive while they're away visiting flowers. Now, Farmer Ellen is saying that bees talk. I don't think that bees talk in the way that we talk, but I think she might mean that if you listen closely and watch closely, we can learn a lot about what it is that they do and what they're telling us about how important they are. Everyone watched and listened, and this is what they heard. I wonder what they're saying. One by one, we zip up high, buzzing through the bright blue sky. We fly over two waving dandelions, inviting us to visit. One, two. Just like Farmer Ellen said, inviting us to visit. They're going to visit those flowers, right? Three, we find three wild strawberries bursting with sweetness. Those strawberries were flowers at one point. One, two, three. Four apple blossoms tickle us with soft petals. One, two, three, four. If our bee friends visit all of these apple blossoms, they'll turn into apples for us to eat. Mm -mm -mm. Five poppies stretch tall, greeting us like best friends. One, two, three, four, five. We stop for a drink where six farmhands water a crop of raspberries. Bees get thirsty, Jake said. Shh, said Amy, they're still buzzing. Amy wants to keep listening to the bees. But Jake is stopping to see that bees get thirsty. Indeed they do. Just like they need pollen and nectar for food, they also need to just drink water like we do. And also, look here. There are some farm workers who are also working very hard to take care of the plants that have those fruits on them. The bees pollinated those flowers so that they could have raspberries, but there are also lots of people who work just as hard as the bees to make sure that the food that we eat grows really well, that helps to care for and pick and package a lot of the foods that we find in our grocery store. So I think we can be just as thankful 
to these farm workers for helping us to have wonderful things to eat as we can to our bees for pollinating those plants. We see seven clovers dance in the sunlight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight flowering cherry trees shimmer pink and white. You see those eight trees there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's springtime, everybody. Have you been seeing any trees outside with flowers on them? A lot of trees will have a flowering period right about now in the Northern Hemisphere. It might be winter if you're in this, uh, the Southern Hemisphere, which means that spring is coming up soon enough. But each one of these little flowers, if it's visited by a bee, might turn into a delicious cherry. Do we see the bees visiting the tops of the trees? Hopefully there'll be some cherries. In the garden, nine shiny pea pods flutter in the breeze. Do you like peas? I know a lot of people who love peas and a lot of people who go, oh, no, thank you, please. Even peas grow in little fruit pods inside of each one of these long and skinny fruits are lots of little small round peas. Even those are brought to us by bees. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Before we fly home, 10 tulips stand and nod thankful for our pollen. Buzzing, flying, working, we do more than you may know. Each of us is nature's farmer, helping food and flowers to grow. All of those flowers are thankful for those bees bringing pollen nearby. I'm gonna look at our comments really quickly. Let's see. Oh, Miss Amateur's class is talking about wanting to try on that beekeeper outfit. Me too. I've never tried one on. I think it would be really fun. And that have favorite flowers. If bees have a favorite flower, that's a really good question. You know, I think that bees like all types of pollen. So any types of flowers that we might see would probably attract a bee. I think if you have a favorite flower, I think a bee probably loves that flower too. What did you hear? Asked Farmer Ellen. Bees count, Shin said. Why else are bees important, Mr. Tate asked. They make honey, Natalie said. But that's right, we haven't really talked about the honey yet, huh? Yes, said Farmer Ellen. Bees drink nectar, a sweet liquid from plants, and carry it back to their hives. Why, asked Natalie. Juice inside of a bee's stomach changes the nectar they drink into honey, said Farmer Ellen. Isn't that cool? Wow. Bees spit the honey into a honeycomb made from beeswax. Then worker bees dry the new honey by flapping their wings faster than we can blink. That's really fast. I don't think if I had wings, maybe that's about how fast they go. Way faster than that even. I don't think I can flap my wings that fast. That's incredible. Jake and Natalie tried flapping their arms as fast as bee wings. Can you try flapping your arms that fast? <laughs> Amy knelt to watch a bee on a clover blossom. Bees sure are busy. Yes, said Farmer Ellen, and without bee pollen, crops wouldn't grow and we wouldn't have food to eat. Eli said, bees are nicer than I thought. Farmer Ellen smiled. It's time to check the hives. Bees sure are busy. They do a lot of work. And I'm glad Eli's feeling a little bit better about being near a bee. Everyone helped slide wooden frames from the bee houses. They found, can you see what's inside of those bee frames? I see bees, I see honeycombs which means there's probably honey in each one of these. They found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten golden honeycombs. Farmer Ellen said, to get honey from honeycombs, we'll use an, an extractor. This machine spits honey out 
which then flows into jars. We put a cap on tight and label the jar and they're all ready to take home. So there's Farmer Ellen and the extractor that I think I said spits it out. It spins it out. She winds this handle right here and it slowly crushes all of those honeycombs so that the wax collapses and the smooth honey comes out of a spout. It can be poured straight into a jar with a label and a lid, maybe even a jar of honey like you have, have at home. Before the class boarded the bus to leave, Farmer Ellen pulled jars from a crate. Would you like a gift from the bees? Sweet, said Jake. Thanks for honey bees, shouted Natalie. And for helping plants grow, said Shin. They're waving goodbye. They're saying thank you to the bees. A bee whisked past Amy's ear. She waved at it. Bzzz to you too. They're all getting back on the bus and saying goodbye and saying thank you. That is the end of our story today, my friends. These bees count. We sure learned a lot about why bees are so cool. We learned about how going from flower to flower and bringing pollen to those flowers helps them turn into and grow into a lot of those yummy foods we like to eat. We learned that bees make honey using the nectar that they drink from flowers and turning it into honey inside of their tummies and then drying it really, really fast with their wings so that we can enjoy sweet honey. We learned that both bees and people are really important in taking care of the foods that grow all around the world and bringing them to places where we can buy them. And I think we learned that being thankful to both these people and to our bees can be a really, really good thing. So if you have enjoyed any sort of fruits today or during your lifetime, that includes things like strawberries and apples and tomatoes like we talked about, but also some less obvious things, things like avocados, things like chocolate that comes from the seeds inside of a cacao fruit, things like coffee for my grown-ups also comes from fruits. Without the bees that help us to pollinate all of those flowers and bring those fruits around, we would have a whole lot less delicious food to enjoy. It's thought that about one third of all foods that we eat rely on bees and other pollinators. So the next time you eat a delicious fruit or something made from a delicious fruit, remember to think in your heart, thank you bees and thank you farm workers because a lot of really hard work went into bringing that yummy, nutritious, delicious food to you. I hope you have a really fantastic day and we will be right back with you next Friday at 11 a.m. for Storytime Live from NHM LA. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.